Okay, guys. I'm not going to really wait for people to come. I'm just going to start with the tutorial because it'll be archived later and I can just sh sh show people to it then. Alright, today we're going to be modeling this. We're going to be doing this model over again. And I have reference right here in this corner. But what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be doing hard surface, um, low poly-ish. I mean, I added some extra detail in the handle here so that we could have something to look at closer to what our reference has right here. But yeah, without further ado, let's let's get started for real. All right, let's move this out of the way. Oh, down here I have the curtain button. The current buttons I'm pressing, L button and R button are left click and right click. So you can see those. I'm going to press Shift C to recenter my 3D cursor. This is what I have custom keys bound, which I will go over and also show you how to do them without customizing your blender. But I have my configuration down below if you're interested in that. All right, so let's start with a new object here. Let's add. I this model is going to be based off of a cylinder. Okay. I want to press T to bring up the transform menu or tools menu, whatever you want to call it. It's this little side menu. You just press T to turn it off and on. You can also click this button and drag it out. But down here we have what we last worked on. Um, the last thing we made was a. Uh, cylinder so we have the properties for it right down here for this model I'm going to do an eight-sided cylinder there we go and with that we can pop into the model by hitting tab and that's also accessible down here I went into edit mode tab cycles through the last two modes you selected out of these modes I won't be using any of these other modes so I can work with tab the whole time all right, so we're in here, and we've got a top and bottom polygon that's more than four sides. Plus, we don't really need them. So what I'm going to do is hit X to bring up this delete menu, and I'm going to delete these faces. Now to get into selection modes, we have all of our selection modes right here. Right now, I'm on face select right now. You might be in one of these other ones if you're just starting out with Blender. But, um... I have these bound to hotkeys that I set up, but they are right here, and you can see which one I'm currently on at all times by looking at this menu right here. So we've got one. I've got my my one set up for uh, vertex, three or two for edges, and then three for faces. All right, and where we are actually in this uh, starting piece, I actually am starting with the handle here. So we're a little big right now. So I'm going to scale us down. Oh, we have to select everything first. I'm going to press A to select everything. A selects and deselects everything in Blender. So I have everything selected. And then I'm going to press S to scale. And now we've scaled our whole thing down. We can continue to scale it down. Okay, so there we have our model. You see that we're not centered on it. We're kind of floating around in space. You can go to view, view selected, and that'll zoom you right in and focus you right around the object so it's right in the center. I also have this bound to a hotkey. I have it bound to my tilde key. If you see down here, that little marking right there is tilde. So whenever I press that, and I'm in this 3D window, I will automatically recenter on it no matter what I do. I will always recenter when I do that. So that's another one of my hotkeys I use all the time. But you can get to it normally by just clicking and going to view selected. It's not automatically set to a hotkey though. You'll have to set that up yourself or um, 
download my file that already has it because I have that in my Twitter pro or my Twitch profile. <laughs> all right, I think that's the basics of all the stuff I have customized. I don't think I have much more that's customized, so we won't have to worry about that for the rest of the lesson. Plus, you can see everything that I'm doing with this. This is scroll wheel. I'm just scrolling in and out. All right, so let's scale this down to match our handle a little more closely. That's close enough. We can always scale for um, added accuracy. So we can then grab that and hit. So I selected it, the whole ring. I, so you can select the edge or you can select the ring by pressing Alt and clicking. I'm selecting that entire edge loop. So I'm going to select that edge loop and press E. Now I'm making an extrusion. And then I'm going to constrain it to the Z axis by pressing Z. And now it's only on the Z axis. So now we have more geometry to work with. You can do the same thing, but just moving that on the Z axis by pressing G and Z. Oop. I pressed a wrong button. All right. So we're going to extrude. I think we need to extrude that again. Let me see. Yes. So easy to extrude, and then GZ to move. If you press Z first, you'll bring up this uh, clear see-through menu. You want to make sure you do your transform command first. Alright. So it looks like I started this model right at the base of that handle. So I'm going to do that too. I'm going to press Control R to insert a ring. I'm going to insert it right here. And then I'm going to press, and then I have control of where it is. I'm going to just press escape so it goes to zero. And now that is exactly at zero on all of the axis. Just a little shortcut to get us in the right spot with that particular line. All right, and then from here, we can start to, so we kind of have the handle here in its basic form. So we can move on to the cross guard or whatever you want to call this part of the sword. So I'm just going to extrude it, move it up with Z, and then I'm going to press S. S in Blender is scale. So I'm going to press S to scale. And you see it's moving on based on the, uh, the 3D cursor position. We don't want that, so we're going to press Escape to undo our selection. By default, it's not on 3D cursor. This is just what it was in last time I was using Blender. But for now, but we will be using uh, Pivot Point 3D cursor during this tutorial. But for now, we're just going to set the median point to, or the pivot point to median point, which will basically make it scale on whatever wherever the center of all the things you have selected is. So now we can hit scale and it'll scale up like we want it to. So I'm just going to kind of eyeballing it to get the right shape compared to this model. Again, when I originally did this, I was just doing this based off of this picture and I was eyeballing it there too. You can always adjust these things later. All right. So you see we scaled it on all axes. So we're really wide whereas our sword over here is really thin. So to scale just this one axis, um, the red line means X, the green line means Y, and the blue line, which is here if I snap it to the window. To snap it to the window, I'm just moving with my middle mouse button. I think that's another custom key I set up. But I'm you know, rotating around my object in the environment, and I press Alt, and, I have, and it snaps right to left ortho up here and it'll just snap to any one of these preset views when I pr just press Alt and drag. Okay, so we want to scale this on the x-axis is what we learned from there. So I press scale, I'm scaling, then I press X, and now I'm scaling only on the x-axis. So now we got that right there you know, loosely 
we're just trying to get the overall shape before we go in and start tweaking stuff. So now that we've got this sort of shape, I can then extrude this on the z-axis and make that shape. If we notice our sword is shorter on all sides than our uh, handle by about an even margin. So what we can do from here is we can do extrude on the scale so I press ES and it's extruding across all of the scale. So we want our sword to be about that big. And you can see here that, well, let's move on to the next step. So we've got that selected. I'm going to move to this view just so we kind of see what's going on after I pressed it. So I'm going to press E with that selected. We've got our sword hilt now. So I'm going to press Z to constrain it. Click right there to let it go. And I'm going to actually do it one more time. Easy. You know, I've got these grid lines that I kind of matched up on some of them. I'm going to be a little bit more lining up on the grid lines with this one. But you see, we've got too many faces now. This is just a four sided blade, and this is an eight sided blade. All right. So. We can either do all, we can either select all four of these edge loops and delete them, but you see that that goes all the way down into the hilt too. There's in this tutorial we're gonna switch back and forth between modeling both sides at the same time and using a mirror modifier at the same time. I think it's time to use a mirror, mirror modifier to get this blade shape that we want with less work. Plus we can do a lot of edits with the mirror modifier on that will help us. So I'm going to select, I'm going to press Q on my keyboard. I don't know if that's one of the um, things I set up, but it's this, it's this option right here. Limit selection visible, turning it on and off. So if I turn, uh, I think if I turn it off, yeah, then the model becomes sort of see-through transparent. This lets me select um, beyond what's visible. Because if I select right here, I can't select the back side. But if I select it here, I can select the back side. Alright, so we're going to turn that on just so we can select the entire model. We're going to select this, make sure we didn't select too much, and then press X, delete faces. So now we've just got half a sword. This is where the mirror modifier comes in. We can then add. I'm in this modifier tab. You might, you probably won't be in this tab by default. You'll probably be in this one by default. But you just click on this wrench and then add a mirror modifier. See, now we are exactly symmetrical. I made sure to do it on the x-axis because I knew by default that the mirror modifier shows up on the x-axis. You might have that problem and might have to rotate your model before you delete the half of it that you want to delete. One of the things you want to be careful of is if you make a mirror modifier and like move something that goes along the seam, you might bust the seam open like this. All you have to do to stop that is turn on clipping here and now when I press GX on this. I'm not breaking the, I'm not splitting the model open, I'm just modifying the edges. Okay. So now for less work, we only have to do these two sides instead of all four. And there, are, and there will be times when we have to go back to the other way. But I'm gonna dissolve these faces. I'm not gonna, I'm, I mean these edges. I'm not gonna delete these edges going to dissolve them. And what that does is it keeps the other geometry there. And you can see that's exactly what we wanted to happen. Now down here in our faces tab, you can see we have a five side a uh, five pointed polygon, one, two, three, four, five. Since this is hard surface, we don't have to worry about edge flow so we can get away with just merging these together. I'm going to press Alt-M, 
this brings up the merge menu. I want it merged to the last thing I selected. Do this for this side, Alt M at last. And there we're back to not having five sided polygons. Three sided polygons are okay. We'd avoid them if we could, but I like the added geometry that it gives because it gives us that nice roundness for a low poly model to have eight sides where we can. All right, same thing for this. We can just select all these, press Alt M. And for this one, we want to do at center because I didn't select anything first or last. I selected it all at the same time. Do that. Boom, we have our sword tip perfect, just the way we want. Ooh, it looks like it dodged our clipping. All right, so to get the clipping back on, as soon as it, as soon as the vertex crosses over the zero, zero line, it'll automatically turn the clipping on it on. So if I do grab X, as soon as it hits there, now it is welded and can't move along the X axis anymore. All right, so the top of our sword is done. Now we can move on to we're not detailing yet, we still need to get this uh, ball shape down here at the bottom. And since this is equal on all four sides, it's com like it's, uh, if you imagine this as one-fourth of itself at, at down here at the bottom, you can see that all, f all the fourths are identical. What I'm trying to get at with that is that we need to go back to um, working on the whole model instead of uh, the mirror modifier because if we select this bottom edge and we try to scale it it won't scale equally on all sides so we're going to apply the mirror modifier can't do that in edit mode it just said so i'm going to i went to object mode i'm going to hit apply again it worked that time all right now we're working with both sides again we're not mirroring anything so what we're going to do is I'm going to just move this line down to about where I want it. Looks like it's about two grid sections wide is what I decided. And for now we're going to delete this. X dissolve edges. Alright. So we want to insert ring. I'm going to press escape so that it goes to the center. And then I think we want three. That seems to be about what I did here. And we want to scale. Obviously we want to make this bigger, but we're not, I'm not quite sure how I want it to scale yet. So let's hit scale. Let's see how that did. Looks like we're a little bigger than that over here. That looks about right. select this one and scale this one out now just a little looks like we're a little bit bigger on this whole thing so if we scale this whole thing you can see we're scaling too much and if we scale this these three loops Looks like this might be the best way to go about doing it. And if we press Shift Z, it will not scale along the Z axis. Now we're just scaling along X and Y. So now we can get to the shape that we're looking for. We're about this big. I'm just eyeballing it. I'm going to scale it along only the Z now. Just shrink it in just a little. Alright. From here, select this edge, scale it in. Oh, we want to extrude. So extrude on the scale. Alright. Looks like I made this pretty thin over here, so we'll just scale that in a little more. And over here on a reference, you can see this is a rounded piece of wood. So let's just 
grab and move that on the z-axis down so we still have our rounded piece of wood. If we go over here and look at this, you can see that I just did a straight flat down inward. Scale Z. Oh, no, 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 no. We want to extrude on the Z. That's about our length. Again, just eyeballing it. All right, we'll insert two edge loops and we'll kind of pick their placement more this time. About there. Grab this. And now we've got a ring of polygon, uh, polygons selected. So now we can scale it in right here. We want to do an extrusion for this. So we're going to extrude, and you can see that it's moving along the z-axis for some reason. We want to scale it, and we want to, and we want to, we don't want it to scale on the z-axis. So we're going to hit Shift Z, and now it's not scaling on the z-axis, but it is on the other two axes. So let's look, let's spin that around. And you can see everything that I'm doing is modeling it in all four directions at the same time. So I don't have to go in and readjust. And, it, and it's perfectly symmetrical on four sides from here down. And then from here up, it's only symmetrical on two sides. All right, to finish our thing off, I think I have a little bevel at the bottom. We'll hit tilde to zoom in on that. Again, that's uh, view, view selected. We're going to go to edge, select that. We're going to extrude Z. We're going to scale that in. And then we need to top that off. To top it off, there's a whole bunch of ways that we can do it. You can just press F, and it'll just make a, a multi-sided polygon, which I don't really suggest. You can hit Control F and try Grid Fill, and that gets what we want. But sometimes it decides to choose the other lines to cross. And I'll I'm just going to build it real quick without explaining what I'm doing to show how grid fill can mess you up. All right, so I just filled it. Use my K tool to show the how how the grid fill tool can try to help you but end up doing the wrong thing. All right, so if it's like that, you can see it's not lined up with our red and green lines. It's going to the other ones. That can happen. Grid fill has a mind of its own there. So you can get lucky with grid fill, but sometimes you will not. All right, so I'm going to show you the way I just did it. So if you want absolute control, you can just press F and then press K to bring up our knife tool. And I'm going to click this and click this. And it snaps a little, so you don't have to be exactly precise. So that gives us one line, and then I'm going to hit E to start a new cut, and the controls for the knife tool are all labeled down here. And then I'm going to hit here and here, and it auto automatically made that vertex in the center. And then I just press Enter, and I just confirmed those polygons. All right, we're getting pretty close. So at this point, you can start thinking, well, I want these details to be more refined. I've got my old model as reference here, but I was just using this as reference at the, in the beginning. Since I've got this here, though, I will take advantage of it a little bit. I'll do GZ. I think I'm going to line it up with that grid line this time. I mean, we don't have to worry about being perfect here. And we've kind of got this extra edge loop here to kind of give it a more rounded look. So we're going to insert that and just hit GZ on it. And you can kind of see that give me the same look as we had on the original one. You can also scale that up if you want to. 
another way you could do that, and this is one of the tricks I like to use, is you hit G twice, and it'll move along the other two edges, like going to slowly becoming the other edge. What we can do is we can kind of, uh, let's go to escape. So this is where we were. We can now do G twice, move this up, and then hit G once and Z. And now we've got a thicker edge, too thick actually. So let's try GG again, go up less, then GC. Yeah, still too high. Let's just give it a little bit and then GZ it down. This will all help this will also help in rounding off. You can do GG and then GG again. And that'll slowly and that'll really quickly round out your model. I think I like that look though. So we're gonna stay with that. Alright. So we've got our hilt. Looks like ours is a little long. It looks a little closer to the reference, this new one I've made though. Do I like that better? Hmm. I think I'm going to leave it for now. I think I like the size of this. So this is a little over two grid units tall. Maybe I will. Hmm. I'm going to turn on Q so I can select all. There we go. Now I've got all of that. I'm going to bring that down. I'm just going to move it to the second grid line just because I feel like that's a good spot for it. Just because this is two grid lines tall, and then we'll make this two grid lines tall, so they're nice and symmetrical in a way. Okay, now we've got this uh, kind of rim. All we need to do for that is insert an edge loop here. So another edge loop in here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to click on this, and then I'm going to press escape, so it's right in the center. And then I'm just going to scale and bow that out. I'm noticing we have a lot of room for a flat surface here. You can see I added these little jewels just for fun. I've got these little jewels here. It'll be fun to add a little color to our handle so it isn't all as drab as this. Plus it helps me teach another little trick I know. I'm going to learn how to do spherical stuff and how to add spherical stuff to our model. So I think I will drag this down so I have room for that. GC. And that's about good. Again, I don't need to exactly copy this. We're using our artistic license to move and fidget stuff around a little, and you can always change that in later revisions. All right, so we're there, almost. We've got our blade, we've got our hilt, except for the gem, but we'll do that last. And now we just need to do these hand grips, and that's just detail work. So what I did for these is we've got one, two, three, four segments. So we can do grids, so add three lines, that gives us four segments press escape on that. So now those are locked in and now each one of these sections is evenly spaced. Now within those two sections, ooh, let's undo that. If I move the mouse wheel, this doesn't show up in my key show program, but if I move the mouse wheel you can see I can bump that up to two pieces. Two, two edge loops, there we go. Again, I'm going to click that, and then I'm going to press Escape to confirm it so it's right in the center. We're going to do that for all of them. This one. Oh, you have to you have to use the scroll wheel while the lines are still pink. So I'll click and then press Escape so those are in the center. Control R. Click Escape. Control R. Scroll mouse wheel. Click Escape. All right, and I could have done this the other way, 
by just adding all of these lines at the same time. But that can get really confusing and you'll have to do a lot of addition and stuff and it's like, why bother? Just take the little extra time to make sure you have the exact number you need. And then for each of these, all I have to do is scale these in. And I actually think I can scale each of these at the same, I can scale all of these at the same time. Now that I think about it, we can go and do individual origins. Hmm. No, I don't think I'll do that. I think we will do these one at a time, but we will do it in a more um, predictable way so that all of these are exactly the same. All right, we're gonna scale and then from here we can kind of you can see these numbers down here right looks like I got them covered up by the sword but down here there's numbers that show how much we're scaling it and we can actually insert a value so I like 7.5 so I can type in so I can make this like ridiculous and then I can type in 0. 7, 5, and it's exactly that number, and now moving the mouse is not doing anything. So we'll do that for all of them. Scale 0 0.75, scale 0 0.75, one last time, scale 0. 75. All right, and now those are all exactly even. All right, we are done with the sword. Now all we got to do is add the jewels on. Okay. So we have a horizontal gem here and a vertical gem here. There are two gems at the top and four gems at the bottom just to make it a little complex on myself. Okay. So what we're gonna do for this is we're gonna bring in, a, we're gonna uh, append a mesh. So I'm inside of edit mode right now, so we're still in the same object. We're gonna add a cube. Boom, there it is. It's obviously huge. Let's scale that down. Ooh, you see it added it where our um, 3D cursor was. I don't think I want that, so I'm going to undo that. I'm going to press Shift-C to recenter my 3D cursor, and that's a fine spot. Now let's re-add that. Cube scale. Now this isn't a perfect spot, but this is good enough for what we're going to do. Scale that in. Let's move it down so we can see it. All right. Now, if I try if I try to use the command I want to use on this much geometry, nothing will happen. But we have this command right here, subdivide, and that just gives us double the geometry, quadruple the geometry, really. But basically, we have more to work with. And now there's a mesh command. I think it's a transform right here. Two sphere, shift alt s. Shift alt s. And it's uh, basically um, giving you, uh, so 1.0 on the value gives us a perfect, or as perfect of sphere as this much geometry can make. Whereas a zero on the value gives us an exact square. All right. So we're going to go all the way to one and then click to confirm that. So now we have the most perfect sphere that this amount of geometry can make. It's not a perfect sphere, but it's as perfect as it can get with this many points. And since we're working low poly, it's a really tiny detail. We don't need that many points to, you know, make something super smooth. And that's the main part of the trick. Let's hit tilde to recenter ourselves. 
All right. So on this bottom one, I have four of these gems. First, I'm going to position it for one. And I don't think I need the back half of this gem, so I'm going to delete the back half. Delete faces. Get out of queue. Select that. We're going to bring it up to where we want it. So I'll turn Q back on so we can see through it. Now we should be able to see it as it passes in. There we go. We can actually line that up exactly. Let's just zoom in super close and get it right on the dot. Ah, there we go. And then we can just hit GX to move it out. And then scale. We're looking under gem over here. Mm, looks a little small. Scale that up. And then I'm just going to scale it on the y axis. And there we go. Oh, looks like it's a little thick on the x axis too. We'll scale it on the x. You know, and it seems like we're clipping out a little bit. So I'm going to scale it on the X just a little. And this clipping through technique could cause some problems with your model if in some engines. But we're not too worried about that for this tutorial. We're just trying to show you how to add decorations and teach you some of the shortcuts and commands. All right, so we got our one gem, but we need four more gems. How can we do that super easy? Well, we could duplicate it, right? But that's not on rotation. Okay, let's try duplicating it and then hitting the rotate button. That's not what we want either. What we do want is we want to use our pivot point 3D cursor. And since I press Shift Z, it's right there in the center. So now we can hit Shift Z, R. And since I'm in uh, the top ortho view, it's rotating around the axis I want. But you can also restrain it by hitting X, Y, or Z. So we don't want X. Looks like Z was the one that was the one we wanted. I'm gonna actually undo that and turn back on the see-through so I can see exactly where I'm putting this. Shift D. Oop, that was Control D. Shift D. R on the Z axis, and then we can press Control, and it'll snap to some of the most commonly used radius. So I can have it, I can, if I wanted it on every, um, if I wanted it on every uh, vertex or edge line that I have set up, I could put it there, but I'm just gonna do it on these four. Let's do that again. Shift D, R, and then hold control. Shift D, R, hold control. And there we go, we have our four gems. These gems are obviously just a tiny bit different from the original ones I created, but that's okay. We're just going for how to do things, not how to do them to perfectly identically match something. All right, we're gonna shift D, move this up here. Kind of get it in the position we want. Again, I'm just going to eyeball this. It doesn't have to be exactly in the center. And then I'll just rotate this. Well, you see we're back on the... We're still on the 3D cursor. So we just need to go back to medium point and then rotate it. Hit control. Boom. There's that gem. Now we're just going to inset it so it's clipped all the way through the model. GX. And 
then we'll just rotate that around the 3D cursor. Shift D, R, and then hit Control. And there we go. Our sort tutorial is done. Thanks for watching if you did. Let me know if you think you're interested in seeing something else. And, you know, we could take this further. We could UV unwrap this. We could paint this. Really simple paint job. Probably wouldn't go too much into the painting part, you know. I could even show you how to do a little animation on this if you wanted. But alright, that's it for now.